next keynote session, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Siti Nabiha Abdul Khalid to deliver the speech. The topic is about accounting for well-being. Before that, I would like to read the curriculum vitae of Dr. Siti Nabiha Abdul Khalid. Please help the committee. Uh, help me, the committee, to share the curriculum vitae of Professor Siti Nabiha. Okay, the committee, okay. Thank you. So, Professor Dr. Siti Nabiha Abdul Khalid is a professor from uh, Graduate School of Business University Science Malaysia. And uh, for education, she is uh, from a PhD accounting of University of Manchester, UK. Uh, consultancy and industry experience. Uh, there are many uh, experiences uh, she, she has here. Uh, for the latest is the economic and social impact of investment. Uh, INTEL Malaysia. Uh, year 2020. Uh, and after that, uh, publication, publication, uh, there are many also, but uh, the latest is the, is the institutional work, institutional work, uh, the title is institutional work and the implementation of performance measurement and management system in a developing country uh, published uh, in Journal of Accounting and Organizational Change, uh, year 2020. Okay. Uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Siti Nabiha Abdul Khalid to present her speech. Please, doctor, the screen is yours. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Bu Ika. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning. To those who are in the morning uh, set up, uh, time zone and good afternoon to us. And first of all, I would like to say thank you very much, very to, much. to Yayasan Penele for the invitation. Um, I'm going to share some of my insights that I get from my research and some of the questions that I would like uh, for us to think about. And... Um, my, my presentation is basically on the, not on the macro part, but it's very much on the micro perspective on the operationalization of uh, performance measurement for business organizations. Do we need a more holistic measure of performance? Okay, so uh, the title of my presentation is accounting for well-being and the questions is yeah, do we need to account or do we need to measure well-being rather than uh, focus only on efficiency effectiveness and so on so do we need to measure well-being especially when we assess organizational performance or when organization assess the internal uh, performance and if so how do we account for well-being and what is the impact of measurement and on, on, on organization and individuals so do we need to account how do we account and if we account for this what is the impact on organization and individuals but unfortunately there is not many empirical research that look at uh, the assessment based on well-being. So what I have to do now is to look at research that look at performance, uh, mainly financial performance or uh, performance of measures of effectiveness and efficiency, and what is the impact on organization and on uh, individuals. Okay. So what is behind this? Uh? The measurement revolution, uh, measurement, ratings, ranking, and benchmarking has permeated various types of organization in public sector, in universities, 
universities, some universities even rank their faculty, their schools, even in non-profit organization and also in Islamic-based organization, such as Islamic microfinance institution. The mantra is, what gets measured get done, what gets measured gets managed. So if you don't measure it, then you don't manage it. So measurement is being propagated as being uh, a tool to enhance transparency, to enhance accountability. But is the, are these measures uh, relevant? Are they holistic? And what is the impact of this measure on performance? Okay, what is behind? What is the implication? So what is behind this revelation is, uh, especially in uh, measurement, of organization, uh, doesn't matter like public or private organization, is actually uh, in developing and developed country is heavily being propagated by various international bodies. And one of the um, for, uh, one is the for, uh, one of the uh, enablers is the rise in new liberalism, which is the uh, pro market values, uh, which argue that. Uh, the role of, uh, for example, in uh, public sector, uh, private sector practices is private is uh, should be uh, propagated to the public sector. So new any rights to give to new public management, the management philosophy of systematic planning, result based management, and merit based performance. Even in microfinance institution, the rise of financial approach, the pro-market values as the means of addressing poverty, even in Islamic microfinance institution. So public sector performance measurement is seen as a key component of public sector management. The focus is on managerialist orientation and technical control. So accountability is towards the KPIs. And the tools of private sector practices are brought into the public sector. Okay. So one of the insights from research uh, is uh, from local authorities in Malaysia, which implemented uh, performance measurement, uh, which uh, process-based performance measurement. And all these local authorities are benchmarked, being benchmarked and being rated through the so-called star rating system. So what happened is it leads to competition between the authorities. So one of the idea is that competition is the basis of human relation. So it leads to competition be, between local authorities, leading to the implementation of performance because the benchmarking results are being uh, uh, publicized. So it leads to uh, local authorities implementing it to avoid public shaming and also to ensure that they get uh, more funding opportunities. However, the achievement of good ratings has not translated into effective performance measurement processes and outcomes. Similarly, in Indonesia, the use of SAKIP and NAKIP and the publication of a rating result leads to many local, local government to implement performance measurement and management system. The impacts in Malaysia, the impacts of measure, it leads to compliance with measurement criteria and assessment instrument. So the type of indicators that is used in the benchmark exercise influence the use of measure, influence the development of measures in the organization. But then it does not translate to effective design and the use of performance management system. So what happened is what is access gets implemented. If you assess based on certain criteria from the result shows that the organization will implement what are uh, they being assessed, the indicators or the measures or the processes in which they are being evaluated on. And what happened also, the priority of service or uh, administrative indicators is prior, uh, the service or administrative indicators are being prioritized over sustainability goals. So sustainability goals has been sidelined despite 
the incorporation of local agenda into the rating system, only nominal role for social well-being was established because citizens were excluded from the strategic processes. So what is assessed is being implemented. Then what you achieve the targets, but you missed the point. So these are some of the insight about measurement. Achieve the targets, miss the point. There are negative consequences. There are gaping of indicators. And the issue is the indicators of efficiency, of processes. Is it truly reflective of organization or individual performance? The measures can be manipulated. And as we have seen, this is on September 16, 2021. The World Bank Group has discontinued the doing business report. So the index exposes problems in using spotlight rankings to guide developmental goals. And one of the reasons is because of the manipulation in the index. Okay. How that is on public organization. How about Islamic microfinance organization? I'm using this uh, Islamic microfinance as a case. To, uh, to discuss this issue. So what are the measures for Islamic microfinance institution? And what are the impacts of those measures? In, as I mentioned before, for microfinance institution, the dominant of financial approach, the focus of broadening access to financing and doing it in a financially sustainable manner has led to the infusion of private sector norms and practices in microfinance institution. And it leads to the priority given to financial goals and financial benchmark. So it was these financial measures were propagated and has been considered as the best practices. It was adopted even by the not-profit MFIs to measure performance. And this was uh, the focus on uh, financial sustainability was further enabled because of the rating bodies, which use uh, financial data, and the role of the CGAP uh, play a very prominent role in the expansion of financial approach. So the financial benchmark was widely adopted as a measure of success and gaining dominance over social performance. So this is an example of a performance measure used by an non-government uh, NGO-based Islamic microfinance institution. So these are the measures that they use in, in managing the organization in terms of financial health, increasing growth and outreach, and ensuring financial sustainability. So from here, we can see that the main focus is on financial sustainability, percentage of attendance of center meeting, portfolio quality, which measure the default rate, monitoring, ensuring participant uh, withdrawal, borrowers not attending the meeting, full capacity because they wanted growth, uh, 400 borrowers per block, increase the number of active borrowers, ensuring continuous loan disbursement, all this relating to growth, but not to the, more of the, not to the depth of outreach. So operating efficiency, operational self-sufficiency, uh, borrower club membership. So mainly all what they do here is having the indicators, some of it are the process-based indicators in ensuring the financial sustainability and growth of the organization. And this is an Islamic-based NGO, Islamic microfinance institution. And in conventional measures, the measures that they use are very much related to the uh, measures of conventional MFIs. So social performance is outreach, financial performance is portfolio quality, profitability, efficiency, productivity. So we have to look back. Should Islamic type uh, of organization, which have a wider role, and function and purpose be assessed in the same way that uh, the conventional uh, organization is. Then you have to look back, what is the function of Islamic finance institution? 
what are the rules, what are the measures. So the purpose is to improve well-being of the community, providing Sharia compliant financing, especially to the poor, the financially excluded, the financially mar marginalized, the micro and SMEs. And interestingly, is to achieve the higher objective of Islamic law, serving the interests of all human beings in this world and hereafter. So going above the self-interest as what the previous speaker uh, talked about. So the purpose is not only to avoid interest, but to achieve social justice and welfare. That was, was the purpose, the objective of IMFI. And the foundation of Islamic finance, obtaining profit, yes, but must be aligned with fairness at all levels of interaction. And economic agents in Islamic framework should seek well-being instead of self-interest or instead of utility. So the foundation objective uh, for Islamic microfinance are based on well-being as prescribed by Makassid Asharia to elevate poverty, to contribute to societal well-being. However, in terms of the measurement of performance internally or externally, they face a similar predicament to that of Islamic banking in terms of performance assessment. So it's based on conventional approach, which mainly the holistic objective of Sharia largely was ignored. Then how to account for well-being? How do you measure? If the objective is for social well-being, then how, how do you measure social well-being? Unfortunately, there are limited insight into suitable measures of the performance of MFIs, both in the empirical literature and also what has been done in practice as what I have shown before. So measuring this social ethical aspect is also might be problematic as they are not easily quantified. And when we look at empirical literature, there is only a limited number of researchers that sought to align the assessment with the objective of Sharia. So the internal processes of, moreover, the internal processes of microfinancing has not been clearly elucidated in the literature, specifically on the translation of Islamic principles of focusing on well-being into the processes and the operation. So the focus is not on forms of product only, but ensuring that the operation, the services enable meaningful cooperation within the community, between those with resources and without, so that they will contribute to social economic justice and well-being of the community as a whole. So there's quite, been quite a number of uh, conceptual and theoretical papers on development of well-being model and index. But some of these models were more for the macro level of assessment. So one of the uh, most recent model by Kadir 2021, uh, he proposed a human well-being model. Uh, we look at, uh, based on Al-Ghazali, looking at spiritual well-being, intellectual, material, familiar and social well-being and physical physical and psychological well-being. And these are uh, the five essentials that he provided. But then when I look at the translation into empirical literature, most of the translation of the well-being concept is used in a very simplistic manner. So what we can do is we look at you know, what are the views of the scholars, industry and regulators on how do we account for well-being? So before we go for how do we account for well-being, we ask them, what is the objective of Islamic microfinance institution? And most of the scholars, industry and regulators say it's profit. They have to get profit, but then must be aligned with the Sharia. And another one is also for dakwah. So profit, sharia, and dakwah seems to be the consensus of the scholars, industry, uh, practitioners, and the regulators. So the measures of performance, when we ask them, they say it's profit and well-being. Then how to account for well-being? 
so far. And I have to say, they need more holistic measures. Uh, the insights that we get from our research is that the profit uh, commercial measures should not be the only measures. Uh, profit is actually the means to achieve social well-being. So you achieve profit so that you're able to provide services to the community, especially to those who are financially exclu excluded. And fulfillment of the obligation to provide services, uh, to provide services that provide avenues for community to avoid riba, uh, riba while developing the socioeconomic status and welfare of community. And the measure of well-being also includes greater value from knowledge gained to dissemination of Islamic products and principles to the community. So what is interesting is even marketing client relationship constitute both economic and dakwah activities. But then, despite the consensus on the goal to achieve maslaha, there are different views regarding the means of achieving it. There is one. The second one is despite the argument that a more holistic assessment of performance is needed, those interviewed did not provide a clear operationalization of what constitutes maslaha and how do we operationalize it for organization. But nevertheless, the stakeholders alluded to the need for social well-being to be included in the performance measure. So, the more holistic assessment in addition or besides the financial performance is needed. A process-based measure is needed to ensure that activities and procedures lead to the achievement of well-being. Since what gets access gets implemented, then regulator government needs to institute a holistic assessment of performance in addition to the focus on financial measures. Concluding questions. Can we measure well-being? Can we measure the unmeasurable? Or a point to ponder, is it achieving the well-being is through other means besides measurement? We see the impact of measurement on organization. We see the impact of measurement on individuals. There are anxiety, uncertainty. A lot of literature has talked about the impact of measurement on organization or individuals, the negative consequences, the risks, and so on, can we achieve, can we account for well-being through other means besides measurement? So this is a point that we have to ponder, especially in the measures of organization, the measures of especially Islamic-based organization in which the purpose is to achieve societal well-being. So do we have other ways of ensuring achievement of this objective besides measurement. So these are the points to ponder. And I conclude my, uh, some of my uh, insights from my research and my presentation. So thank you very much.